When you write characters in animation, do you necessarily write with an actor in mind, or does that change when an actor is already cast? Well, uh, usually, in the case of the Disney movies, for instance, you know, um, even at the outline stage, you know, I mean, first of all, the, the process for writing a, a animation uh, screenplay or a story is quite a bit different than, than writing for live action. Live action, you go in, you might pitch a story to a producer or the studio likes the idea, they hire you to write, and you go off and you write it, you know, for, you know, whatever, three months, and you come back with the first draft and you kind of work from there. It was very different in uh, Disney animation because they don't, you don't start writing a screenplay. You, you basically start with an outline that becomes a, 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 a that's fleshed out into a treatment and that phase of, of, of really breaking the story in a much more of a narrative kind of uh, format can take anywhere from six months to a year. So, you know, you're not even, you're not even writing script yet. You're just, and that's another part of the process that I really love because, you know, it, you know, a lot of screenwriters don't get a chance to write sort of, you know, sort of narrative writing, uh, you know, uh, prose writing, you know what I mean? in terms of telling the story and that's what all those outlines and treatments are all about so that for me was really special and a lot of fun and ultimately at the end of the day i think hunchback had a had a treatment that outlined the structure the characters and scenes specific scenes and it was like 25 pages long now you know you, you know that the most animated feature screenplays are only about 90 pages long so when you've done 25 almost 30 pages of of, of a treatment, you're well on your way to having just, you know, written the script as well. Um, but that was a great process. And so some, during that treatment phase, you have artists that, you know, you, you come up with sequences that you know are going to be in the movie. So you have storyboard artists already boarding them and, and, and it's really fun and it's really cool. And they come with ideas that then influence the treatment, uh, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. And one of the things they do to answer your question is they start thinking about voices. It even you know because all the characters are now in the story and who we're gonna. So they start. You come in one day and uh, they've done a, a, a character sketch sketch of say let's say Frollo or Quasimodo, and then they have maybe three or four or five actors faces next to it that they're that they think could be right for that so they're already thinking of voice actors you know well before the script is even written you know uh and the same story with atlantis and or st same with tarzan uh and then as they you know they get closer to you know production they start having meetings with actors and uh some actors they know exactly who they were a few actors, a few characters they need to read so that they know that they, you know, in sync with what the characters, et cetera, et cetera. But I think, you know, I mean, in, in the case of Atlantis, I, they, knew, they knew they wanted Michael J. Fox. And uh, so they didn't read a ton of people. They went to Michael. Michael loved it. And he came aboard. And, and I think most of the actors in Atlantis, unless I'm mistaken, uh, were cast fair. I mean, you know, they, they, zeroed down into one one actor maybe two on some characters that they wanted to you know they wanted to go to uh, so that was you know i mean that's that's kind of how the, the the voice acting comes about you know and then uh you know in the process of course is that they record all those actors very early on before they start animating the movie they go out and get the recordings and they and so the directors are actually directing the voice actors and in a way, directing the movie even before they start animating. So it's really it's a it's an interesting kind of process for sure. And and then the other thing, which is why you know I was so you know kind of interesting transition for me you know, on Hunchback was I was the only writer on it for like a year and a half, and then one day I come in and there's like three other people in a normal meeting that have never been there before. And I'm like, oh, I wonder who these guys are. Well, it turns out they're writers and they've been invited on. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is my movie. There was a little bit of ego there. Uh, but, it, you know, you quickly realize that because of the process of animation, they don't start at the very beginning and then just animate their way through the movie all the way to the end. 
they start on every sequence. They have animators, storyboard artists working on everything. So it sort of moves this way through the movie from beginning to end rather than this way. Uh, so one writer cannot be everywhere at once in, in the movie uh, or in the process of production. Things come up in scenes. Hey, we got an idea here. Or we need to rework this here. And so you need writers available to do that sort of thing, the sort of the nine to five stuff during production. And that's what uh, that, that's what those three writers came on. And they were awesome. You know, they come up with bits, you know. And uh, so it's a very absolutely collaborative process from beginning to end and one in which I had to learn okay yeah this is not just my I'm not just the writer of this movie everybody's participating in the writing of this movie that goes for the producer the directors the storyboard artists the animators the other writers that have come in to write work on oh maybe one's a, a, a good at jokes and maybe not another is good at you know sort of other things and we all collaborate to make one terrific movie and that that was why it was so fun to write and work on those movies you know it was a great process so how did you come get involved with um batman year one and then superman batman apocalypse uh were you a batman fan growing up oh yeah sure absolutely absolutely i you know i think uh i was recruited by alan burnett who uh you know is works at uh uh warner brothers animation and uh i think he either just liked my work at disney or or i i can't remember the machinations of how I, they reached out to me or i ended up you know um being asked to write batman superman apocalypse but i know this it's just another one of those things where i was like holy shit i'm never you know in those days christopher nolan had a hammer lock on batman uh, live action right i mean his he was making those movies i knew i was never going to write batman that character in a live action movie because it was you know christopher nolan was doing those and and uh same with superman uh, you know so this was my opportunity to write two characters that i grew up absolutely loving so why wouldn't i why would i turn that down you know so that was my you know thing and i had a great time and i had a, there was already a great story jeff Loeb had already created a great story and great characters i got to bring you know whatever i bring to the table um and uh and it and it was a lot of fun and uh got to write supergirl i got to write a little bit of wonder woman i mean you know, i got in a lot of action and so it was just i had a great time doing it and it turned out really well I mean, uh, in in my opinion, and they uh, and also uh, Bruce Tim was there at the time. Uh, you know, he's a big. You know, he was an institution at uh, Warner Brothers Animation, especially with regards to superheroes. And uh, so I think uh, they came to me and shortly after Batman Superman Apocalypse and asked me if I would uh, uh, adapt Batman Year One, which was a great honor. And then you know. Obviously, Frank Miller classic of uh, the Dark Knight, and uh, again, I just knew I was I'm getting an opportunity to write this character that otherwise I probably wouldn't get in another medium, you know. So why wouldn't I say yes to that? And that was a, another great experience. And they just said, "Look, you know, it's Frank, man. So just be uh, reverential to the original source material as, as much as you possibly can." which, you know, translated to me as like, this is not a Tab Murphy script. This is a Frank Miller. It was my job to kind of disappear into the background and just do the work of adapting Frank's, you know, characters, his dialogue, etc. I got a few things in mind, you know, that's fine. Uh, uh, but I didn't need to do much in that regard of, of, of reinventing stuff and creating new scenes and all this sort of stuff. Because, you know, I mean, Batman Year One is already, it's already so tight and such a great graphic. And the, you know, the look of the film, I mean, the, the directors, Lauren and, uh, uh, is it Sam? I think, yeah. Sam Lou and Lauren Montgomery? Yeah, yeah. The, Sam and Lauren, they, they just honored the the graphics. I mean, a lot of the scenes, you just, you're just taken right out of the graphic novel. It's, it's awesome, you know. So, uh, so it was a lot of fun. And, uh. You know, and they had great voices, and uh, you know, I was I'm really proud of my opportunity to help, you know, bring that 
that that graphic novel to life in the animated forms, you know. So it was it was great. And it, interestingly, I uh, several years after I'd written that, I ran into Brian Cranston at a coffee bean in L.A. And I don't I don't bug stars. I mean, you see them all the time, you know, and give them their space. But I had to go up to Brian and say, hey, you know, I really liked him working Batman Year One. He's like, oh yeah, thank you, man. I, uh, I I I had a great time, in it. and I said, well, and I wrote it, you know, adapted it. He's like, no way, you know. So it was really cool, you know. Awesome. <laughs> so to wrap up this interview, um, one last question: Can you say anything about any of your upcoming projects? Uh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, we're, we're, you know, the problem is right now. I have a, a couple of projects that are, uh, you know, that were, you know, like uh, heading towards really, you know, like, I don't want to say immediate production, but we're on the fast track and everything is stopped because we're in the middle of a writer's strike. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, but I do have a, a film uh, that I wrote a, uh, an adventure film around the character of Harry Houdini, where he sort of plays a globe trotting, you know, trying to solve a big uh, crime, a mystery. And so that is uh, something I'm really excited about. Uh, what else? Um, I wrote my first documentary last year, which was really cool. And uh, it is on Netflix now. It's called Kangaroo Valley. And uh, we plot, you know, so we'll, it, it's, uh, it's different, yet it's perfect. For, again, right in my wheelhouse, you know. So I brought a little bit of uh, Disney to the storytelling of that documentary. And that's why I was hired. And so I think it turned out really well. And if you haven't seen it, even if you don't think you like kangaroos, go check it out, man. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I actually have a kangaroo in my house. <laughs> my my like... dog, uh, Lexi Shag. Nice. Well, check out Kangaroo Valley on Netflix, everybody. You'll uh, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. You know, I when they asked me to do it, I was like, wait a minute, kangaroos. I know they have pouches, I know they hop. What else do they do? I mean, what can I was shocked <laughs> what else they can do and uh the director was like yeah we have great footage of kangaroos hopping through like a foot of snow and I'm like i had never seen that before so uh yeah check it out man it's, re it's pretty cool i'm really i'm really proud of it can't wait to see it tab thank you so much for taking the time for this interview everyone thanks so much for tuning in be sure to subscribe to our channel and tab i hope you have a wonderful day thank you again so much for taking the time to do this interview and michael my pleasure pal my pleasure. My pleasure, too. Okay, see you. cool. I'll see you later. All right, take care. You too. Have a good day, everybody.